What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics. And up next, I think we've got an interesting video here. We just had this big heritage signature auction or platinum auction, and there's been a lot of talk about it. There's been people that have been saying it was it was really weak, it was soft. There's been people like myself that have been saying that it is a it's been a strong auction. And I think I know why there's a little bit of a split, but I'm also going to give a little peek into how the sausage is made and with, with me pricing these books and how I look at the, the auctions themselves on if they are strong or weak. So we're gonna get in a little bit, you'll see a little bit of spreadsheets. I'll try not to do too much of that because I know that can uh, you know lose people's attention relatively quickly, but this would be a fun one. We're gonna talk about a lot of books and we're gonna look into how I come up with my assessments for these sales. Let's get into this. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So if you are not aware, there was a big heritage signature or platinum auction that happened uh, a few days ago. It started on Thursday of last week. It went through Sunday, has multiple sessions where they have comics and original art, all that kind of thing. There were some, some big sales and there were also some big underperformers. And I think that how people view an auction, what they're looking at can really impact if they think it was a strong or weak auction. And I've talked about this before with, uh, with my pricing, when I used to do those pricing videos every once in a while, where I was showing the performance of gold, silver, bronze, and modern, and how I look at hundreds of books per auction. Whereas I think the difference is some people probably look at a few of the big books or they just have a few books that they're watching. And if those don't perform well, they go, this was a weak auction. Whereas when I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it hundreds of books and there's always going to be high sales and low sales, but I'm looking at overall, how did this auction perform? So with that, let's, uh, let's get into this and we'll start talking about the, uh, this auction, how things performed, all that kind of thing. So before we get into the sales here, because I've got one of the books pulled up here, this is the Batman number one four row that sold for 288,000 that I felt actually sold very well, was actually a very strong sale. Uh, we'll actually get into how I assessed this auction. So I'm going to uh, share this spreadsheet here. So this is the basic spreadsheet that I use when I am evaluating comics for an auction. And in this specific auction, I was watching 115 books in session one, their, their big comic session. And in their secondary comic session, which was on Saturday, I was watching, I believe, 152 books. So if we go all the way down to the bottom here, you can see the overall assessment of those two sessions. So this is session one, and I'm going to go over real quick how I come up with my assessments of how I felt this auction performed. So I have next to each book, I have what I think this book is going to sell for. That's what I have is my estimated value. Then I have the high, because I like to see if this book sets a new high or not, you know, for that book with that grade. I have what it actually sold for. This is what I pull in from Heritage after the auction is completed. I just have some things I do on the spreadsheet that pull that number out. And so that gives me what that sold for. Then I have one that just tells me, was that a high or a low sale? Did it meet what I thought it was going to sell for or did it go below what I thought it would sell for? Then I have these for a little more of the extreme results. These are what I often use when I'm talking about the surprising high or low sales. This is if it beat my estimate by 20% or more, or if it went 20% or more below my estimate. Then just I have a flag here on if it was a new high, and then I have the percent difference it was from my estimate. So you can see here, this X-Men 120, for example, I had estimated it would go for 4,000. Uh, it had a high during the comic boom of 11,501, sold for 3,120, so it was low, and it went for 22% below my estimate, so it falls into this 20% or below column. Then all of that gets consolidated down here, below, this, uh, uh, below that, and I've got a few different numbers that I look at. So I've got, this is the total number of books I was watching in that session, 115. This is the number that beat my beat or met my estimate. So every once in a while, I get exactly right. You know, so it's beat or met my estimate. This was the number that were 20% or more above, 20% or more below, and the number that were actually new highs. 
Uh, then you can see I've got this little subtract six here. The reason for that is some of these books have never sold before in grade. And so the way that I have approached that is that I'm not just going to say automatically it's a new high. I say it's a new high if it also beats my estimate. If it falls below my estimate and it, uh, it hadn't sold before, then I remove it from that number. So I don't count it as a new high. That's just the way I do it. You know, you can feel however you want about it, but that's how I approach it. And so then that adjusts that new high value. Then these are the percentages, you know, these ones right here. So for this auction, for that first session, 62% of the books beat my estimates, 29% were 20% or more above, 13 were 20% or more below, and 48% hit new highs. Because there's a lot of golden age. A lot of that stuff ends up hitting new highs. But there were some new highs with Silver Age and I believe even Bronze and Modern. So for me, if you watched any of my videos from a, a, a while ago, a couple of years ago, when I was doing these assessments uh, every you know month or so, if it was over 50%, to me, that is a strong auction. That means that if it's 50%, everything is, is static. It means that Half went above, half went below, because you're not going to guess the right number all the time. So to me, that means everything is basically static. So if I'm above 50%, that is a strong auction. So we're at 62 for that first session. Then I get even more granular, and I look at gold, silver, bronze, and modern. You can see here gold, 58%, beat my estimates. Silver, 75%. In that initial session, silver was very strong. Uh, you can see here 21 of uh, 28 beat my estimates. Bronze, there aren't as in these big in these big auctions, these signature auctions, there aren't nearly as many bronze or modern because they just don't have as many high dollar books. So there's definitely going to be more variability in your numbers down there. But for bronze, it was 40%, 205. For modern, it was 75%, which is three of four. Now I don't check every book. I don't have that much time to price every book. I pick all the books that I consider important to watch. And that gives me a good representative sample. You can see for that session, I priced out $5,393,000 of the books that sold out of 6,433,000 that sold in that session. So it's a very representative sample of that data. Then with session number two, uh, because that's where I had started getting some feedback from, from people that were saying like, this is really weak. And they were talking about session two. And I was like, well, maybe I got to check session two. So I, I had priced out a bunch of books for session two, in this case, 152. Session two was massive. So I priced out 152 in session two, 85 beat my estimates. So that's 56%. So not quite as strong as session one, which was 62, but still over 50% to me, that is a strong auction. We had 35 that went 20% or more above, 14 that went 20% or more below. So that was 23% and 9% respectively. Uh, so then when we break it down by gold, silver, bronze, and modern, out of gold, 57% beat my estimates, almost exactly like session one. Silver, it was 55%, not as strong as session one, but still above 50%. Bronze was 46, so still weak like session one, but just barely. I mean, 46% isn't bad. And then modern was 60%. We had three of five in this one versus three of four. And so 60%. So again, gold, silver, modern looked good to me. Uh, bronze was a little weak. And one of the things that I think is important to talk about here is that if you're just looking at a few books, I could easily make this auction look super strong or super weak because I could pick out 33 books right here that all beat my estimates by 20% or more. And then you go, look at how strong this auction was. Everything was, you know, was killing the numbers, everything 20% or more. Or I could pick these 15 books plus these 14 books that were all really weak. And if those happen to be the ones that you were paying attention to in that auction, from your perspective, it was a really weak auction. But from my perspective, when I'm looking at a very broad range of books, I'm seeing a pretty strong auction overall. And yeah, I thought that it was very likely that we were going to start hearing uh, some talk that this auction was really weak specifically because the very big books that were in the auction underperformed. And those are the ones that the most people are going to be paying attention to. The Tech 27, the Universal Marvel Comics 1, the Cap 1, those were weak sales in my opinion. And so if somebody was just looking at those, was just watching a few of those really, really big hallmark books that were in this auction, you would think this auction was weak. 
And those are part of these numbers. Like they're in here. They are some of the ones that are these underperformers. But when you look at everything overall, which is the way I like to approach these, and anybody can approach it however they want, but the way that I like to approach these, this gives me a very good representative set of what sold in that auction. And to me, it was strong. Session one was stronger than session two, but they were both pretty good. And the fact that we actually had silver and modern have more beating my estimates than not. I mean, I haven't been tracking these nearly as much for, for a while at the level of detail I used to, but when I had stopped, those were still pretty bad. You know, a couple of years ago, I was still consistently seeing these numbers in the 30s, the 40s, some down as low as the 20s. And here, 75, 75, 55, 60, like getting numbers above 50 was not happening two years ago, one and a half years ago. It just wasn't. Gold was. That was the only one. Gold has consistently been around 60 to 70 percent for the last four years, sometimes higher. Every once in a while, it'll have a bad week and it goes below. But that's how I've been. I've been viewing this. And I wanted to give this little bit of an inside look at it so that you could get an idea how I'm assessing these. And that I'm not just making these numbers up and just like pulling them out of, you know, pull them out of thin air. This is how I'm doing it. This is how I'm assessing these books. So I'm not going to show really the spreadsheet much anymore, but I had some people ask about the, the red and the green and that kind of thing. The, the blue is just here to mark a new session. It's the first book in a new session. Uh, the red are ones that uh, I felt uh, strongly underperformed. The green are ones that strongly overperformed that I just thought would be interesting to talk about. So that's what I use when I am creating a video. I, I'm pulling from this list. And it just helps reduce it down because otherwise you can see here I had 115 plus 152, so 267 books. I cannot talk about all of those. I'd get bored and lose my voice. You'd get bored. And so I've got to reduce it down a little bit and just pick and choose certain books to talk about. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull this, this over here. So now you can see this, uh, the screen and I can talk about some sales data. We can talk about some of these cool books that sold. And again, some that went high, some that went low. So we're going to start with that, uh, that Batman number one. And so this is this 4.0 and Batman number one has really been underperforming for like the last year. Tons and tons of copies have been coming up for sale. Even in this auction, I think there were three of them. You know? So there were a lot of them in this auction too, but this sale was very strong. I had it going for 250,000. Its prior record was 264 and this went for 288. So not only did it beat my estimate by 15%, it also set a new record. And so to me, that was, that was a big deal. And that was very early on in the auction. So, you know, something that, that I think sometimes it can help set the tone maybe even for the auction, but there were some weak ones early on as well. I mean, for example, right after that, we had Captain America number one. Now, the reality is this tied the record, but this, this copy, and, and there's a few things about it, but this copy is a 5.0 white pages. I'm not normally a page quality person, but for this book, I went and checked on Go Collect and looked at all the prior sales going back 10 years. And none of them were white pages copies. I think maybe one of the restored copies was a white pages copy, but none of the other ones were white pages. This was a, this that's a rare thing. And on Heritage, that usually commands a significant premium. And so that's why I was expecting this book to really perform well. And it, and it just, it didn't, it performed okay, I guess, but I had it going for 225 to 250,000. So we'll say 237,500. So to me, this went 24% below my estimate. I thought that white pages were going to really boost it. I thought that the, the great appearance was going to boost it. Now, the one thing with this, and I think we talked about this in the live stream was that this book of the four points of attachment. You know, you have the staple, you have the front and back cover on the top, the front and back cover on the bottom. It is only attached at one of those points. And so that could make some people risk uh, nervous about it. Uh, if it fully detached, the max grade this book can get is a 4.0. You can get a 4.0 with a fully detached, detached cover. I have gotten them. Uh, you can get a 4.0 with a fully detached cover. And so that could be a concern someone has is like, oh, if that detaches, I'm immediately dropping to a 4. That could be something that maybe hurt the value of this book. Now, the next book that was, I think, a big shocker to a lot of people, and there's been a lot of talk about this one on like Facebook posts and like 
uh, Facebook groups and, and this kind of thing. This is this Detective Comics number 27. And this is a 4.5. It is the exact same copy that sold two years ago for $1.14 million. Sold for $675,000, lost almost $500,000. When you take into account fees, probably lost over $500,000. I mean, this was a, this was a, a big drop. Now, the thing that there's been a lot of talk about has been like, let's, let's jump over to Detective Comics 27, just so I can show you that book uh, that sold like the same book, but you know, it, you'll see what I'm talking about when I, when I pull this one up. So if we check out that prior sale from two years ago for this 4.5, you can see it's that $1.14 million sale here, pull up that book and we look at that one versus this one. So when you look at that, this one looks faded. The, the, this 4.5, it is, it is absolutely the exact same book. It's got the same flaws and everything, same serial number. So it was not pressed and cleaned, you know, that kind of thing. There've been some talk about like, if somebody took it out and tried to maybe remove some dust shadows or whatever, uh, none of that was done. There does appear to have maybe have been, it's possible there was some reversion on the on a press on this book you can see some little ripples on the side here that people said maybe hurts it but i think what probably hurt it the most is that that the colors look different the colors look faded and now i'll say i have noticed uh relatively recently over the last maybe month to month and a half that the books in the scans on heritage have looked more faded than they used to I noticed it with a couple book, like with a book that I bought, uh, that Submariner 11, and I was worried that it was actually uh, it had gotten more faded. Uh, but then when it showed up, I was like, "Whoa, this book is incredible!" <laughs> like the, the colors were super deep, just incredible. And so, to Heritage, if anybody's watching, maybe check your scanner. <laughs> I, I think that there may be something going on with their with their scanner that is not catching colors as well. Maybe they updated it. Cause I, I mean, I watch all these auctions. I see all these books and something seems off with the scans lately. And I've had, I've talked to some other people that had books up for sale in this auction. And they said like, they're like, my book didn't look as good as it does, it, you know? And so that seems like maybe something that happened and could have maybe really hurt the value on this book because it, if it looks faded, but then the person gets something that shows up that looks like this, they're going to be super, super happy. I still think this was probably the best buy of the auction. I mean, you get a chance to buy Detective Comics 27, first appearance of Batman for half a million dollars less than the last sale. I don't care if it's light tan pages or anything. That was an incredible buy. So congratulations to whoever picked it up. And I'm sorry for the person that sold it because that that was uh, probably wasn't very fun. But I think that there could be something going on with their scanner. Just my, that's my theory, <laughs> my working theory right now, just because I've seen it with a number of books. And I've heard other people say it about their books that they've sent in. So just something to, uh, to think about there. All right, let's move to the next book. This was one that had a, a strong sale. Uh, this is Fantastic Four, number one, 8.5. This one went for 144,000. I had it going for 120,000. So 20% over my estimate, still a big drop from where it was at the comic boom when it was 350. But this is the type of thing I'm talking about. Like we're having silver age books beat my estimates again. That really hasn't happened very often for, for quite a while. So we're having silver age books here, beating my estimate. This is one I thought might actually not perform quite as well uh, because of this, uh, this upper right corner. It just, it looks like the interior pages, something just a weird cut or something. I thought that might deter some people from, from bidding just the visual appeal of it, but it clearly didn't. Uh, you know, and I talked about this one when I did the preview for this auction, I felt like this one was kind of yellowed, you know, compared to other copies that have sold recently. And so I was expecting this one to go a little bit lower and it didn't, I mean, 144,000 to me was a strong sale for this book. Now, the next one that was a, in my opinion, a pretty big underperformer. And this is where you start to run into the problems where you have to, enough of these books, these big ones at the front that underperform people see it and they're going to make a judgment early on, on the, on the auction. And this was this Marvel Comics number one, 4.5. It's the November copy. There was also an October copy in this auction, which was restored, which actually had a great sale. So we'll talk about that one too. So I, I think it's interesting that you had two copies of Marvel Comics one sold back to back and the restored copy crushed my estimates. The 
unrestored copy underperformed. I mean, it was to me that was that was wild. So this went for two hundred eighty-eight thousand. I had it going for three hundred sixty thousand, which was actually the last sale. Uh, that sale was also a November copy. Most of the sales you see out there are November copies. Uh, I talked about this in my little intro video to uh, to this auction, where there are about ten times as many November copies as October copies. And the October copies were the first print, basically. They sold them out, and then they're like, "We need to print more of these." They printed a whole bunch more, and then that's the November copy. Uh, and you can see it's it says November up here versus October. But yeah, I had this going for 360. It went 20% below my estimate at 288. I think I think it's such a cool book just for what it stands for, being that Marvel Comics number one, kind of like Timely Comics number one. But I mentioned this in the live stream. I am not a fan of this art. I, I don't like the art, the cover art. Uh, but I was talking about the October copy. So here you can see this one says October right here, uh, whereas this one says November. It's got that stamp over the October. That's, uh, you know, they basically covered it up. Um, so we'll go back to this October copy. This is a restored copy. Uh, I believe it was A3. Let's check out. Yeah, A3. Color touch, pieces added, tear seals, reinforced and cleaned. In theory, cleaned means you can't get back to blue label. So that's one of the things you always try to consider. I've heard some people say they can do it, but I don't know. So, uh, but clean means generally you can't get back to a blue label. So that's just something to consider when you're when you're pricing out that book. I also considered that it was the October copy when I did my estimate, and I had this one going for one hundred and fifty thousand. It never sold before in grade, but it sold for two hundred and twenty-eight thousand. Crushed my estimate, fifty-two percent over my estimate, and. I mean, only 60,000 less than a universal. That's a, I mean, this was a big sale. Like no matter how you look at it, this was a, this was a big sale for this book. It, it's a seven zero. I mean, it is better looking. I mean, the four five has, you know, the colors aren't quite as bright. It's got this little bit of like either tanning or a uh, kind of like a shadow on the right edge here, but still like for a restored copy, this was significant. This was a, a great sale. Now, jumping back to a what I felt was a weak sale, we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Don't worry, we will move on to the, the session two as well so that we can see some of the not 100,000 plus type dollar books uh, that sold in this auction. Uh, but we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, first print, nine, eight, off white to white pages. I, I mentioned in my preview video for this auction that I thought that might hurt it, but I didn't think it would go down this much. So I had it going for 115,000, uh, went for 87,000, 23% or no, 24% below my estimate. This book had a peak sale of 245,000 back during the comic boom. So big underperformer, but I just want to point out how much this book had gone up. So if we look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, because honestly, even at 87,000 here, I think there's a definite risk that this book continues to drop, maybe down to even like 60 to 65,000. So if we look at, at this 9.8, I mean, just like look at the history for this book. It had this huge sale of 90,000 back in 2019. 2018, it was at 38,000, 2017, 27,000. And so this jump, I mean, almost 10x from 2017's numbers. So this book definitely tends to go up each year. There's, there's demand for it. It's a, it's a popular uh, series of characters. But even this $90,000 sale, I've mentioned a bunch of times. I remember when that happened, how uh, a Golden Age guru on Comic Tom was just commenting on how huge and like crazy that sale was. And we're still at that number. I mean, 87000 is still at that number. And that was only five years ago. So I wouldn't be surprised if this continues to trend down more. I mean, you can see in 2019, there was even a $52,000 sale. So I think 60, somewhere in that range, is maybe where this book goes to before it makes a turn. So just something to be aware of with this one. I would be cautious with it because I think it still has quite a few thousand dollars uh, that it could drop. Uh, now, the next one that had a, a really strong sale, one that... This one's this one's been, had a couple strong sales in a row now. We've got All Star number eight, first appearance of Wonder Woman. This this is a great looking copy. Colors are deep on it. Went for ninety thousand dollars. I had it going for seventy two thousand, which would have been a new high on its own. Its prior record was sixty six. This beat my estimate by twenty five percent. And 
we had that one O that sold recently as well for around 15,000 on eBay, just maybe a week or two ago. So this book has had a couple strong sales in a row. I, I was talking to someone else about this, that, I mean, when you see one of the big mega grails start to underperform, if you've been looking for that book, that is the time to buy it. Like that tech 27 that sold in this auction. I mean, that was the time to buy that book. If you think that book is going to stay down for long, you're crazy. And same thing appears to be true with All-Star Comics 8. Maybe Wonder Woman's starting to get some strong sales. I mean, there was a Sensation Comics 1 that sold in this auction that was a super strong sale too. And so Wonder Woman's had some, some big sales. I can't remember if the Wonder Woman 1 was strong or not. I'll, I'll have to, to check that one. But uh, there was a Wonder Woman 1 in this auction as well. But yeah, All-Star 8, first appearance of Wonder Woman. It's been, uh, been going strong. Now, the next one I wanted to point out is just because it was another restored book that was also a very strong sale. This was the one of the restored copies of Batman number one. This is a 7.0, slight mod, A2. A lot of notes up here though. So, you know, a fair amount that had been done to this book. Small amount of color touch, tear seals, spine split sealed to cover, cover and centerfold reinforced, staples replaced. So staples replaced is another one of those things that generally the best you can get to, even if you removed all that other stuff, is a conserved copy. Once those staples are replaced, you're kind of out of luck. Now, I know there's some people that will do it, but I'm I'm not a fan of, uh, they'll like try to sneak that by. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. But regardless, I had this going for 65,000. It went for 90,000, 38% over my estimate. I mean, like a, a huge sale for a Batman number one restored. I mean, we had this big Batman one restored sale. We had the, uh, the big, Marvel Comics 1 restored sale. I mean, restored books, at least in the golden age, have, at least in this auction, we're definitely getting some attention. Now for a, a week sale, sticking with Batman, there was a 7.5 of Batman number three that went for 14,400. I had this going for 20,000 prior record was 21,600. So this was 28% below my estimate. I mean, one of the things that might have hurt it a little bit was the miswrap, but honestly, most of these books have a miswrap. My Batman 3 I had had a big miswrap. A lot of the Batman 3s I see out there have this type of miswrap. So I think most people are pretty used to it, and this isn't even that bad. Mine was cutting into the, the 10 cents over on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, so, I mean, I don't think that that would have been enough to knock it this much. So, I mean, this, this was a pretty big underperformer. So Batman number 3... Uh, went for 14400 I've kind of been seeing that in general in a lot of the Batman issues. I've been seeing a lot of strength in detective comics and weakness in Batman, in the Batman title. So it's kind of weird getting that uh, that little split there, but uh, I was talking about this with some other people, and I, I think it's probably more of the cartoony nature, the jokey nature of Batman title versus the more serious nature of detective comics. Uh, I think that probably plays a role in that, but just something that that I have noticed. Now for another, we'll call it restored book that performed really well. It's again, it's a weird split because I felt the Captain America one universal underperformed the Captain America one conserved, which is technically just a nice way of saying restored. It's a specific type of restoration sold for 78,000. I had this going for 65,000. So this beat my estimate by, uh, by 20%. And so, and I mean, it's a decent looking book, but compare this to the Cap One Five O, the white page copy. They, I mean, they're they're not even close. I mean, look look at these colors. Put these colors in your your mind right now. Then we go here. Look at these colors. I mean, these are incredibly deep colors, and this one to me underperformed. And then we have the you know the the conserved copy of Captain America Number One. With, with much more muted colors, having a huge sale, in my opinion. Like I, mean, like I said, 78,000. I think it was a married centerfold too. Yeah, yeah, so married centerfold. So it's not even like the complete original copy. You know, it's a, it's a married copy, which can hurt it even a little bit more. This one, really strong sale. You know, I, I, that's all I can say is that a lot of these restored books had very strong sales in this auction. Now... Uh, sticking with Captain America for one of the, the weaker sales, we had Captain America number three. I love this cover. I would love to get a copy of this. I, I, I mean, I wish I could have bid on this one. <laughs> I mean, a 6.5 for 32,400. 
that, I mean, again, I know it's light tan pages, that type of stuff sometimes will hurt on CG or on, uh, on heritage, but this is a great looking copy. Six, five is an incredible grade for this book. The record in grade 55,500. I had this going for 40. I felt that that 55 was, was way high. I didn't think that that was a repeatable sale, but still 19% below my estimate. This is the first Stanley work. This is the first Red Skull cover. You've got this great Schaumburg cover, Cap jumping in, the woman in this giant cannon, you know, Bucky tied to this bomb. There's all kinds of cool stuff on this cover. I think it's one of the best covers of the Captain America run. And to me, big underperformer in this one. I was definitely expecting more out of it. Uh, but speaking of Captain America, one of the monster overperformers, holy cow. Captain America number 46. This is the Holocaust cover. It is one of the most well-known Captain America covers. I used to have a 2.5 that I ended up uh, trading for, for another book a, a while ago. Um, but this sold for 33,600. Like a 7.5 sold for, I believe, less than this maybe six months ago, eight months ago. I mean, let's, let's look at the uh, Captain America number... 46. Now there was a big sale for a two five, uh, just a couple weeks ago. And this is one of those where you go like, we need a confirmation sale. Holy cow. This is, this is a confirmation sale. I still think that this is probably high. This is probably not repeatable. I mean, look at this. Oh, okay. No, I was wrong. It wasn't seven, five. It was a six. zero. it was this one here. We had the six. This was, I believe the Bobby blue book. I thought it was a seven, five. I guess it was a six. zero. so, uh, we had this six. zero Bobby blue collection great looking book sold for 31,165. Then here we've got a 40 going for 33,600. We had this 25 go for 19,200 earlier in June. That was the big sale that I know a lot of people were like, "Wow, that was a monster sale for this book." I didn't think that that was repeatable, so I had this going for 20,000 in grade, which Honestly, was even like I was aiming high. I mean, we had a 5.0 in April go for 20. We had a 4.5 go for 17.4 in 2022. We had this 3.5 replace staples go for 11 here. I, I mean, to me, I felt like I was even being a little aggressive at 20 just because I thought that this was an, an overpay at the time, you know, 19.2 for a 2.5. But then we get this big sale here for a 4.0 at 33.6. And so, yeah, I still think that this is, would be tough to repeat, but. I mean, it's definitely, it's getting the attention I think it deserves. Like, I think it, it, I've said it's the most significant book from the golden age, like historically significant to me, this is the most significant book that was done in the golden age. And it is getting the money now to back up that statement. Um, obviously not like first appearance stuff, but historical events that are represented on a comic. I, I don't think that, that this can be topped. So yeah, huge sale huge sale for that book. All right. Now I want to touch on, uh, on one of these, just because these were so strong. I was not expecting this at all. There were a bunch of these mad magazine, you know, um, gains file copies that sold and they were going stronger than what I've seen for the pre-code horror books. I couldn't believe it. Like pre-code horror, uh, Gaines file copies have been doing really, really well lately. These mad magazine ones were crazy. They were huge numbers. And so the prior record was 7,188. I had this going for 5,500. This went for 12,000, beat my estimate by 118%. This was a big sale for this book. And let's go check out uh, GPA here. So mad number four. And let's see, we got Mad Magazine number four. And we're just go, you know, we'll go look at the census for this book. And you can see there are 10 nine eights. There's even a nine nine for this book. That that's what really surprised me so much on this one is that there's a lot of nine eights for this book, and it's not it's not even the top of the census. I mean, look at that. You got 10 and nine eight, one higher down in the note here. So yeah, I mean. This was a big sale, and this was across the board for almost all of these Mad Magazines. There were a ton of them that sold in this auction, and they were really, really strong. Now, one of I think one of the better buys that was in this auction, you might be surprised that I'm saying this, because it's a 
it's called a trimmed book was this one right here. This, this underperformed. I had this going for 80,000. It went for 60,000. It's a one Oh apparent, but when you look at the notes, because it says it's trimmed, but the notes say right edge of center fold and page one and two trimmed. So what this means is that what someone in theory could do is remove that centerfold, remove page one and two, and now they have a 0.5 universal because it's no longer trimmed. Now, I would hope someone wouldn't take the book apart. <laughs> that would really suck, you know, taking the book apart to try to get that. But a 0.5 universal and then you add in the value of the centerfold in those first two pages. I mean, the first page of Superman one is an expensive page. It's, I mean, first two pages are expensive pages. So there's a lot of value just in those. I think this went cheap. I, I think that this alone, you know, after you, if you would have removed it and sent it back in is an 80 to a hundred thousand dollar book. And just because, you know, just because it's got that purple label and, a couple parts of a page are trimmed on the interior. It ends up getting, you know, 60,000, which I think was a total steal for this book. I think this one was a, a great pickup by whoever got it. All right. Now the next one that I wanted to talk about, I did actually, I did a post about this one on Instagram as well was Albedo number two. This is the first appearance of Usagi Yojimbo. Now the reason I talked about this one on Instagram was that just about three weeks ago, there was a sale on Comic Link for a 9.8 that sold for $26,000. That sale obviously didn't get pulled into GPA because Comic Link's sales don't go into GPA. And then you get this 9.6 that sells for $33,600. So you can take different viewpoints on it. You know, you could say like, oh, maybe the, the Comic Link one was the, the low sale. But my opinion has been like I, cause I've been talking about this book for a while that the value of that book in a nine, eight really is more like maybe 20 grand, 25 grand on the high end. And so that sale, when it hit 26, I was like, all right, it corrected back. That's, you know, it's maybe even a little high still, but that's around where I think that book is worth in a nine, eight, but then you get this huge $33,600 sale, which isn't GPA. You know, and so people forget about the sales that don't get pulled in, you know, and so it's, it's possible this helps hold up this book. I don't know. Um, but to me, the problem I see here is I think a, a good comparison for this book is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1 had a 3000 book print. This had a 2000 book print, if I remember correctly. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are far more popular than Usagi Yojimbo. I mean, they're associated, but far more popular than Usagi Yojimbo. And so at 33,600, this is basically at the value of a 9.6 of TMNT1. It's so close to it. And so that's, I have a problem with that. That's why I don't think it's a sustainable price. And sure, anybody is welcome to disagree, you know, it's fine. But I think this was an extremely risky buy. This book, before the auction started, the live auction, was at $8,700. I was like, yeah, that's around where it should probably be. You know, maybe it go, gets a few bids in the live or something. We went nuts. <laughs> $33,600. I do not believe that is a repeatable sale. But, you know, we'll see if another one comes up. It'll prove me wrong or right. And it's fine either way. I don't really care. But I... I don't think that that was a, a safe purchase by any stretch. I think there's a lot of downside risk to that book. Like I said, there were some really interesting things with Silver Age as well in this auction. We had uh, some strong Spider-Man sales. So Amazing Spider-Man number four. Uh, we had a 9.2, which is a very tough grade for this book uh, that sold for 36,000. You can see that sale there. Let's jump to the Amazing Spider-Man number four. So that's 911. Five, four. And so his first appearance of Sandman, you know, a great looking book, nine, two white pages. This was a new record for this book. Prior record was 32,400. I had it going for 30, went for 36 and 20% over my estimate and a new record for a silver age book. Again, something that is to me pretty significant. And it happened again, right after it. 
We had a 9-4 of Amazing Spider-Man number 9, 18,600. Prior record, 16,800. I had it going for 14,000, 33% over my estimate. So these, these books, like these high-end books in Amazing Spider-Man were doing exceptionally well in this auction. Uh, now, another one that tied its record for, for Silver Age was 91164. This was Batman number 181. First appearance of Poison Ivy, 92 off white to white pages. I had this going for 9,000. Its prior record was 15,600 and it tied it in this auction. This is a book that in basically all other grades has generally been trending down. It's been holding up relatively well, but has been trending down. And to have it meet its record from comic boom times, I mean, that that's a, a surprising sale to me. Now, I know this has been a long video and I, I appreciate you sticking with it, but I'm going to keep going. You know, you can listen to this as much as you want, or you can, you know, close it out or listen to it later. You can listen to it while you're doing something around the house. It doesn't matter, but I got a bunch of books I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk about a bunch of books. Uh, one of the other modern books that was a big surprise was this one right here. X-Men number 510. 9.8. This is the J. Scott Campbell sketch variant. I was hoping I could maybe get this book. <laughs> I thought I might have a chance. It's like, this was right at the end of that, that session. And so maybe people wouldn't be interested in it or something. Uh, it was sitting at 6,300 when this all started. Closed out at 16,800. Its prior record was 12,500. So not only did it crush its prior record, I had it going for nine. I mean, a lot of these books have trended down. These modern variants, these modern grails, these rare books have been trending down. This one, not even close. <laughs> New record, beat my estimate by 87%, monster sale for this book. Now, let's move on to the next session that had comics. These are the books that, they're still very expensive, but generally less expensive than the ones that are in the first session. Not always. There are, there are always some really big books in here too. But the first one that we're going to talk about is Detective Comics number two. Super rare book, restored copy, B2. I think this one could even get back to Universal. Yeah, small amount of color touch on cover, tear seals to cover, cover reinforced. All those things can be undone. I mean, sometimes you might really wreck the book doing it, but can be undone. So this is a book that can actually get back to a blue label in theory. And so I had this one going for $10,000, went for 7,200. So 28% below my estimate, which is a big surprise for early tech, especially, you know, a, a number two. These are extremely rare books. I mean, let's look at the census on this. There's 18 total uh, universal, 11 restored, 28 total, should be 29, I guess. Uh, but only 29 copies even out there. And to have this one underperform, I was surprised, especially one that could get back to a blue label. So that was a that was a pretty big surprise for me on the underperforming side. Now, one that performed pretty well uh, that actually really surprised me was this one. It's called Gangsters and Gun Malls, a number two, a 9-0. It's got that QES sticker, you know, it looks good for the grade. 5,520. Prior record, 2,050. I had it going for 3,500. Crushed my estimate by 58%. Really strong sale uh, for this book. I mean, obviously, a 9.0 is a rare book. There are two in 9.0. There's one higher, so there's a 9.2 as well. It's not top of census, but still very strong sale for that one. And just to show another one of these big sales for a Gaines file copy, we had 95148 here. This is Mad number six in a nine six gains file copy sixteen thousand eight hundred. I had this going for eight grand, doubled my estimate, one hundred and ten percent. The next book was the same. We had Mad number eight nine two go for six thousand. I had it going for three. Prior record was twenty nine hundred. I mean, huge sales in this auction for these gains file copy Mad magazines. Just monster, monster sales. For these books just generally across the board i mean there were a number of them that i was watching and most of them beat my estimates not all of them though uh just to kind of show you that not everything in there you know beat my estimates uh this one i had going for three thousand it went for 2400 so it was 20 percent below my estimate but a lot of them did really really well all right now the next one that performed well uh, there were a bunch of planet comics 
And that was something that was interesting because I, I had heard one person had commented in uh, on one of my posts that Planet Comics underperformed. And I was watching one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 different Planet Comics. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five of them underperformed. So that means 10 of them overperformed. You know, that's that's 66% did well for, for Planet Comics of the ones that I was watching, only 33% underperformed. But that's the whole thing. Like if you just happen to be watching just those, you know, those five or whatever, or, or those were most of the ones you were watching, you saw those underperform, then you're going to think that Planet Comics didn't perform well. Now, one of the ones that that uh that i felt performed really well was this one right here which i was also specifically watching because i recently picked up a copy uh this is a 7.5 went for 2280 i had this going for 720 dollars. this sale was was wild to me and that's why i don't feel like this sale is repeatable uh i this but i wanted to point this one out because this was a massive sale and i'll, I'll show you why i priced it that way and it's not like there's some big outlier in there that, that I felt, you know, justified that, that sale. Um, so if we, we go down and check out that book, you see a, uh, a seven, five here. This is that $2,280 sale. I mean, look at this in 2021, 900, 2019, 900, an eight, five went for a thousand and twenty, a seven Oh went for 630. I had to go back and double check this one, make sure I didn't make a mistake. You know, I went even and, and checked the the images because I was like, maybe like the wrong book is getting pulled in or something. But no, same book, eight five thousand and twenty dollars just in May of this year. And I mean, yeah, it had had a higher sale, fifteen hundred. This was a seven five. It went for two thousand two hundred and eighty. I mean, this was a huge sale, and I think that seven hundred and twenty dollars an estimate for this one is very reasonable. And it just crushed my my estimate. I mean, that's all you can say for it. Like the person that sold that one should be very happy with that sale. Um, now for an underperformer, sticking with the, the golden age here, it's one of my favorite books. It's always sad seeing these ones underperform. Uh, but this was Spirit number 22, a 7.0, which is an extremely tough grade in this book. And this one I had going for 7,500. Its record was 8,000. It went for 4,800, 36% below my estimate. This one was definitely a, uh, a big underperformer. And I honestly think that that's just a great buy by whoever picked it up. I mean, this is, like I said, this is a tough book, uh, especially in grade. Now, I mean, there are maybe a couple things that that could have turned someone off. Like you can see, it looks like maybe there's a like a, one of those dust shadows here that affects the, the colors on the book. You can see it up here as well. There's a little bit of lightning. So that maybe could be something that had deterred some bidders. But I, I still think that that was, a, that was a low sale for that one. All right. Now let's let's jump down to some, some non-Golden Age. So we get into some of the Silver Age stuff. Because this was definitely one that, that people called out because it was a low sale. And this is the type of book that a lot of people would be watching this. And so if they saw this sale, they'd go, wow, things are underperforming. This is this amazing Fantasy 15, 5.0. Went for 38,400. I had it going for 44,000. This is the lowest sale in quite a while. This is 13% below my estimate. It's a nice looking copy too. It's got the Marvel chipping, which some people don't like. And it's got somebody's name or something written here, which some people don't like. But the colors are deep on this copy. Great looking colors on this one. And so this is the type of book that when you have something like this sell and it underperforms, a lot of people are watching it. And so people are going to think the auction did poorly. But similarly, right afterwards, we had this 9.0 CBCS, Amazing Fantasy 15, sell for 24,000. I had this going for 16. And I know, you know, it's, it's a 9.0, so people are going to say like, oh, it should be, you know, it should be higher. But this one had all three edges trimmed. That's usually something that really deters bidders quite a bit. It had small amount of color touch on cover, cover reinforced, but all three edges trimmed. And so I'm, I'm surprised that it performed as well as it did. Beat my estimate by 50%. These are tough. I mean, it's CBCS. It's also, 
trimmed, it's restored, but they don't use a purple label. So you always wonder if somebody misses that or not, but obviously they didn't miss it. Like a nine O is you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> so, uh, but, but still like trimmed is usually something that really hurts these books and again, restored did well. That's, that is one of the major themes I saw <laughs> across this auction is restored books were selling surprisingly well. And usually silver age restore hurts even more because there's a lot more of them. There's a lot of blue labels available, but again, performed well. Now, this one I, I had to talk about. We had a Brave and the Bold 28, 8 not restored or anything, CBCS. Sold for 14,400. I had it going for 18,000, went 20% below my estimate. Now, why was this one so interesting? This is off white to white pages, you can see, right afterwards. CGC, 7.5, off white to white pages. 15,600. Half grade lower, sold for $1,200 more than the CG, uh, than the CBCS. So these are the types of situations that you generally look for when you're trying to get a good comparison in the performance of CGC versus CBCS. And Mickey and I talked about this one on the live stream. Uh, it was going to be way later in the auction. And so we weren't going to be staying on to, to see this one sell. So I made sure I went back and checked to see how it did. Because when the live stream started, like, or when this live auction started, they were both at the same price. They were both at 12600 The CBCS went up to fourteen four, CGC went up to fifteen six, And I mean, hey, same page quality, lower grade, sells for more. So just wanted to point this one out because you don't get these situations all that often where you have a near identical book selling back to back CGC versus CBCS. And, you know, you can see the ultimate results with this. I mean, if, if it had gone the other way, I would have talked about that too, but it didn't. And it never seems to. <laughs> so that's the, that's kind of the point there. All right. A few more modern books that, uh, that we had out there. We had this one that just, this book shocks me that it still goes for what it goes for. It really does. This is Star Wars Clone Wars number one. This is the special edition. This is the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. 9-8 went for 3840 I had it going for 3000 Had a peak sale in the comic boom of 16000 So it's well down from that, but still a strong sale. Beat my estimate by 28%. I mean, let's take a look at that one. So Clone Wars number one. Uh, then we've got, I think it was, I think it's 2008. I think that's the one. Let's make sure. Yep, 2008. You can see the special edition here, this 3008, a lot of down. You know, like this is where you're, you're still catching that fallen knife, it feels, of this. But look what this book was prior to the comic boom. $100 in 2015, $300 in 2017, up to $700 in 2019. This book is still five times what it was in 2019. It's just like Ultimate Fallout 4, the variant, which we will talk about. It It's too too high still, in my opinion. I, I just, I can't see this as a sustainable price for this book. I mean, who knows? Maybe it is. But I just, I don't see how this book is sustainable at these prices. It is still so high compared to where it was. But, I mean, this one held up. This was a strong sale, so I wanted to point it out. Now, uh, the next one that was a... A, uh, a week sale. Man, Marvel is just ruining this book. <laughs> so we've got Tomb of Dracula, number 10, first appearance of Blade, a 9.6, went for $5,040. I had this going for 7,000, 28% below my estimate. Record was 15,600, down a ton from that. So just a big underperformer. I mean, 9.6 white pages, beautiful looking copy, um, but huge underperformer and one that until the MCU shows they're going to be able to do something well with Blade, I, I, it's hard to buy these types of books. It, it just is. Now, on the other side, one that performed really well was Strange Tales number 169, First Appearance of Brother Voodoo. Now, it's still down a lot from where it was. It had a peak sale of 27000 It hasn't sold a 9.8 for a while, but every other grade has cratered in this book. So I was thinking this one would follow suit. I had it going for 5,000, beat my estimate by 116%. And I'll show you why that's what I thought this would go for. Because I feel like this is one too where people might, 
they might have priced it differently than I did. But this was a book that went totally wild <laughs> during the comic boom. But I mean, look at all that red. Like, look at this. Like, 9.2 is now 676, 9.4, 1,000, 9.6, 1,800. And then we go to the 9.8 here. This book prior to the comic boom 2020 was four grand. It is still two and a half times where it was at 10,800. There's no way I could recommend that book at that price point. Everything else, I mean, look at these. Everything else has come back down to those prices. 2020, 1800, we had a $1,000 sale this year. That's below 2019 sales prices for a 9.6. I mean, 9.4 here at 1,000, it still could maybe drop a little bit more. It's still a little elevated. You know, low of 887. That's getting around the 2019 prices. It's below the 28, uh, 2020 prices. So it's get. I mean, it's getting there. But this 9.8, to me, it's just one of those things where people see those sales and they have, they have a hard time letting it drop that much at once. You know, it went from 27 to 20 to 14, now to 10, and the next one will probably be seven, and then it maybe drops to six. You know, it's just... They don't sell all that often, and so they tend to take longer to drop, but it doesn't make the buy any less risky. Like, I think there's a lot of downside risk still to that book at that price. I think 5000 maybe 6000 is around where that book should be, but huge sale. Like I said, crushed my estimate 116% over what I thought this book would go for. All right, last one. I know, super long video. I think it's like my first video that'll probably be over an hour. <laughs> so... Uh, other than a live stream, but there was so much stuff to talk about. I just, you know, I wanted to do that intro at the beginning. So I got to close out with this one. We have got ultimate fallout for the Georgievic variant. Finally had a big auction house sale below 10 grand. We had had the eBay sale a while ago, but the auction houses had still been pulling 12, 15, 16, those types of numbers. And uh, this one, this even what I thought it would go for. I didn't think it would correct this much in this auction. I had it going for 12,500. I've said I wouldn't buy it until it hit five, but this was a big step down towards that number. 9,300 went 26% below my estimate. I mean, we take a look at ultimate fallout number four. And, you know, this is the one in 25, the Georgievic variant, first appearance of Miles Morales, the book that really epitomizes what the comic boom was when you look at the prices for it. This was a book that prior to the comic boom was about a $2,000 book, jumped up to $43,200. So 20 times the price. And we are still, that's what I'm saying, like we're still four and a half times where it was. Now, I don't think it's going to drop all the way back down to those numbers. I don't think it's going to drop down to a two to $3,000 book. That's why I'm saying five. I think five is around where it might drop down to. And you can see, like we had that $9,500 eBay sale here, but then after that one, uh, we had two more sales, one at 15 and one at 16. I've seen a bunch of sales on Instagram, you know, for 12 and that kind of thing. Uh, so this is one of those books that had been holding up, but I think this is going to be the sale that's really going to be influential on the price because it finally broke that $10,000 threshold. And I think it's, likely just going to keep uh, keep ticking down there. We've also had the cover A has been breaking below a thousand again. I don't know about that $500 sale. I don't know what that is, but you can see we have multiple sales here in the, the 900s, just barely like 945. There's an 895, 999, 871. So it's it's flirting around that that thousand dollar price right now. I saw one listed on Instagram for 999 and nobody had claimed it. Um, so yeah, it's just one of the, it's another one of those books that I mean the cover A is still well above where it was. I mean it was a two hundred and fifty to four hundred dollar book in twenty nineteen, and it's still two to two and a half times that. I don't know how much more that book will drop. Um, I mean he is a popular character, but the nine eight variant I think or just the variant in general I think is still extremely extremely risky. So I know this is a super long video. Hopefully. You know, you stuck through or you're, you know, just, we're listening to it while you're mowing the lawn or folding laundry or doing whatever, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Just have it playing on in the background. Uh, hopefully that intro 
helped out a little bit just kind of to just show how I do my pricing, where this information comes from. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that kind of stuff. And I'll leave you with this. A treasure in the sky, 50 grand and flying high. Now it falls like fading dreams, 9K and losing steam. Collectors turn away their sights From Miles Morales' fight Peter Parker's still a king The web sling they prefer to fling Ultimate fallout Price tags falling down Once a grill, now a frown Ultimate fallout Watch it hit the ground Highs to lows, no rules